213 Rock with Eric Melodica on Vinyl Times Classic Rock Radio. Hell yes, la Web Rock Station, Vinyl Times, le Classic Rock Radio en direct avec nous, Mr. Marcus Ulrich du groupe Them. Le guitariste est avec nous ce soir en direct pour nous présenter euh, le groupe Them et aussi le nouvel album qui sortira le 30 octobre, Return to the Hammer S'more. Ça, c'est sur 213 Rock, sur le Vinyl Times, le Classic Rock Radio. Hi Marcus, how are you? Hi, good evening. I'm fine. Everything great. Thank you. Hope you're fine too. <laughs> yeah, it's a great pleasure to hear you tonight on Tune in Rock. The name of the web rock station is Vinyl Times Classic Rock Radio. I thank you very much for accepting my interview request. Thank you for having me. Yes, donc en direct, ouais, je vous l'ai dit, hein, Marcus Ulrich, le guitariste du groupe, le heavy trash metal rencontre l'horreur et le côté fantasy. On en parle tout de suite sur 213 Rock avec le groupe Zem et son nouvel album Return to the Hammers More en direct avec le guitariste Marcus Ulrich. Marcus, um, with the new album Return to Hammers More, here is uh, the third part of a trilogy which was launched in 2060. Uh, And 16 and um, on the sweet uh, on sweet hollow and continued in uh, two, uh, two years later uh, 2018 with a manner of the seven gables it's a lot of work and a lot of road traveled yeah um, that's a lot of work um, so two years later we we're back uh, and it's obviously it's not even a trilogy it's it's really one story that began on sweet hollow okay and it's now finished so this is uh, the final part a return to hammers more um uh, yeah it was a lot of work and the thing is that we released um every album after two years and we played some tours and some festivals and everything so yeah and not to mention that we come from from the u.s and from germany so we can't rehearse every week <laughs> okay so yeah But we're, we're used to that. So as we always say, we're pandemic proofed because we're used to work like that. Ok, effectivement, ça a été beaucoup de travail, beaucoup de route, effectivement. Notamment, le premier album était sorti en 2016, qui s'appelait Sweet Hollow. Ensuite, en 2018, le Manor of the Seven Gables. Alors oui, c'est une histoire qui continue, bien évidemment. C'est juste la le troisième album, c'est une suite, hein, bien évidemment. Tout ça, ça se suit, donc il faut en connaître l'histoire. Il faut avoir, bien sûr, possédé le, la, les albums, euh, les lyrics, les paroles, etc. Pour comprendre ce qui se passe, c'est carrément un scénario. C'est, euh, Je vous l'ai dit, hein, c'est la rencontre un peu entre l'horreur et la fantaisie. Il y a beaucoup de choses et... Et euh, notamment c'est juste c'est cool en tout cas le, je sais que le nouvel album on l'a écouté avec mon partenaire Olivier c'est juste dingue quoi c'est pure bombe et vitrage en tout cas et allez on, on développe tout de suite uh, Marcus with my partner um, Olivier on the Web Rock Station Vinyl Times it's been three years already that we were following you because uh, the first and the second album was great really heavy of course and we knew in advance that we had to be ready for the release of the part three musically it kills And it well out the story, of course. Yeah, sorry, I didn't get the, the last question. So. No, so I say that the new album, the music it kills, and uh, it's a yeah, well it out story. Yes, all the music kills. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, it became even a little bit thrashier, I think. That's right. So um, we're all very much into that kind of music so um i mean troy the singer originally sang in in a thrash band called cold steel mm -hmm. and for the guitar players that's just our roots and when when we did the first one i wrote the music and i didn't really know where 
to go. So I just wrote some songs and we didn't even know that it turned out to be a band. Uh, now that it became a band and everybody's into the heavier side, we just thought it would be nice to yeah to make it even more thrashy this time. So the last one was was heavier and faster than the debut, and now again we we just thought it would be nice to become heavier because probably everybody would expect that we become a little bit more commercial. <laughs> But mm -hmm. um, yes, we did the opposite. Ah, effectivement, donc euh, depuis le premier euh, l'Allemagne, il y a quand même quelques line ça a changé un petit peu depuis qu'il est arrivé, etc. Donc l'histoire, la musique, tout a pris quand même une, 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 certain, une certaine route. En tout cas, ils ont voulu beaucoup plus trash, beaucoup plus heavy, effectivement. Ça, c'était ça, c'est la nouvelle orientation du groupe. Ils se sont mis d'accord là-dessus, un peu moins, quoi, avec quelques avec petites pointes commerciales, mais bon... C'est surtout trash, quoi. C'est là-dessus vraiment que, que, Mar que Marcus hein, insiste, quoi. Vraiment, quoi. And the return to the Hammersmore continues in the same thematic of its two predecessors and propose a concept with a captivating, captivating final, demonstrating at the same time and the musical evolution of the band. As you said, thrash metal evolution. Yes. So, um, just because it is the climax, as you can say, mm. um, it probably fits that it is even heavier um so in the beginning when we always when we start writing the music and everything we know what happens so we know what would happen in the story but we don't know exactly what happens ah. in each song so when we just start and and we write some songs then it's kind of troy the singer he says okay this could be somewhere in the middle so we need another fast one or mm. i probably write a song usually the first song i always write is the opening track and mm. that somehow sets the mood for me and then we just work closely together so that everybody knows what the album needs uh, we need a, a more commercial song so free the first single was written as a single um and that's the only one that's it's i would say it's a little bit happier and the rest is pretty much heavy straightforward thrashy yeah. some technical stuff okay that's how we prefer that yeah Ok, effectivement, donc, euh, donc ils connaissaient l'histoire, mais ils n'avaient aucune idée au départ de la musique, c'est vraiment euh, dans l'évolution, hein. ils ont un côté très évi, vous l'avez dit, on le répète encore, c'est un côté trash avec une pointe commerciale, donc ils savaient, euh, ils connaissaient euh, donc le, ils connaissaient l'orientation, ils n'avaient pas encore tout terminé, mais ils avaient déjà un bon point de vue, doit, euh, un bon point de vue concernant enfin cet album. quoi. And the album begins with a beautiful narration. Oh yeah <rire> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, and uh, yes, sorry. No, I say the the yeah, album begins uh, with a beautiful narration. A very beautiful narration. It always, I mean, even the first and the second one began with a narration. And mm. the funny thing is that it always begins while the album before ends. So mm. it's always from a different point of view. So the second one began while the the first one ended mm -hmm. with some children seeing what happens right there, and the third one just begins. And Ramson, KK's yeah kind of helper, he sees what happens in the end of the second album, and so we kind of need the narration so that everybody knows what's going on right now. Okay, and that kind of became yeah just a thing to explain so everybody who is into the story kind of gets what happens right now and how everything starts. Ouais, effectivement, donc la narration est très importante dans le nouvel album, elle est différente, c'est différent à chaque fois donc sur chaque sur chaque album. Euh, maintenant, les gens commencent parce que l'album va arriver donc l'histoire va être connue effectivement, donc c'est c'est très important tout ça quoi, c'est très important. And Marcus on the song in Age of uh, Ascension There is a little yeah. wink of the King Diamond spirit. I love the character of KFK and his voice is perfect. Yeah. Musically behind, it's solid. It's a super deal. It's boom. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, so that you, the high screams when he does the, the chorus mm. um, with, a, with a high King Diamond kind of screams in yes. the Age of Ascension. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's real. It, it's super thrashy, but I mm. mean, them began as a as a King Diamond tribute band, 
but the only member was was KK or Troy at that time, and it was just an American band, and they mm. they did tribute shows and played King Diamond stuff mm. um, because he's able to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's but, cool. Uh, it's it's great. Yeah, but so just we we don't want to be a copycat, and of I course think the music has absolutely nothing to do. Uh, with King Diamond, but there are still people out there who tell us that we sound exactly like King Diamond, and I'm just mm. like, yeah, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. I don't care. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, sometimes it just fits. So um, it's kind of a he just wants to show, and he he shows that he's able to do that, and he still can do the high screams and everything. Mm. Um, so that the guys who want to bash on us because we sound like King Diamond they should have something to bash on so he probably just did it because of that I don't know <laughs> <laughs> bien sûr of course of course effectivement dans le titre Edge of Ascension notamment il y a un petit clin d'œil comme ça hein, pour ceux qui vraiment pour les connaisseurs euh, donc euh, notamment dans, sur l'album Zem avec le titre Sleepless Night il euh, y, y, y a un petit truc en tout cas effectivement anciennement le groupe était un tribute band au départ et ensuite donc euh, dans la dans l'évolution dans aujourd'hui ça ne y a, y a, ça n'a rien à voir avec King Diamond effectivement il y a peut-être allez une petite euh, touche au niveau vocal mais bon ça ça dépend quoi mais euh, en plus euh, le chanteur est génial quoi vraiment Hein, le personnage, le KK Fossor est vraiment, il a une très très belle voix musicalement derrière c'est très solide ouais c'est un super deal quoi, ça, ça, ça se mélange très très bien, c'est parfait quoi le, je vous dis, hein, le disque c'est une tuerie totale, c'est une grosse pièce c'est masterpiece of heavy metal ça c'est un très bon disque de la rentrée en tout cas and Marcus, the quality of the choirs um, is incredible oh yeah Oh, thank you. We had Paul Sabu once more um, helping us. Paul Sabu? Choir, so, yeah, Paul Sabu. The guitar uh, player? The guy who... Uh, Paul Sabu, the singer, uh, okay. he did a lot of work mm-hmm. um, for a lot of hard rock bands in the 80s. Mm-hmm. I think he he worked with Madonna and, and Brian Adams ah, or okay. whatever and a lot of, lot of AOR and hard rock stuff in the 80s. And he also has some... some uh, some solo stuff out mm. um, the funny thing that i i always thought is super funny i don't know if you know the the movie the thief of baghdad okay that's a film from 40s and that was his father and paul sabu does a lot of stuff and he helped us with some backing vocals uh, on the last record and we just asked him again and he he was very happy to do that and he of course he did an awesome job so what you hear with the backing vocals is troy and it's paul sabu on some parts um yeah came together really nicely Ouais, effectivement, ils ont fait la rencontre avec Paul Sabou, donc un an qui leur fait la description notamment, hein, il a une longue carrière notamment, et puis en même temps, euh, je vous dis, hein, le titre Edge of Ascension, il est génial, et puis il y a aussi une qualité de cœur derrière qui est juste incroyable, quoi. Ça, c'est vraiment un titre à écouter, donc son aide a été vraiment très très précieuse sur ce titre, quoi. Excellent, quoi. Continuons, and uh, it's, uh, it's a still going strong on the track, uh, called The Tumultuous Voyage to Hammersmoor, with the drum set behind its uh, it's a real bombardment it's so fast so heavy bam 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 <laughs> yeah yeah it's so heavy yeah. it's the real bombardment um, it's it's really it's really hard to play some of that stuff yes that's the right the thing is we we come from from the thrash stuff and i just as a guitar player it's just it's just in my blood i mm. love to play those fast rhythm stuff i always say it's probably easier for me to play all Exodus records on guitar than one ACDC record because mm. because that's just who I am. And the funny thing is that it's the same with our other guitar player, uh, MJ, Marcus, another Marcus. Uh, and he yeah grew up with the same kind of music. And the, the song he wrote on, on the album, he also wrote uh, three tracks, the music for three tracks plus an outro. Uh, and one of the songs he wrote is Battle Blood. And that is even more uh, difficult to play. It's just like um, it's pure horror to play that because your right hand kind of <laughs> <laughs> suffers badly okay. after you play that. 
Yeah, I know it's really easy. Ouais, sur le titre, hein, The Tumultuous Voyage to Emersmore, notamment, euh, la batterie, c'est carrément un bombardement, quoi. Ça va très, très vite. Euh, double grosse caisse, batterie, caisse claire, etc. C'est, euh, c'est, je vous dis, ça tue totalement, quoi. C'est, on, on passera le titre tout à l'heure, hein. Enfin, tout à l'heure, enfin, tout au long de la semaine, en tout cas, c'est, c'est, ça, ça déchire, quoi. C'est, c'est vraiment gros, quoi. Et, euh, ça va très, très vite. Il aime ce genre de, Marcus aime ce genre de partie, en tout cas, la guitare, ça, c'est génial. Ça aussi apparente aussi à nos titres qui s'appelle euh, Bad Blood, notamment. Uh, effectivement donc c'est je vous dis hein, c'est un très très gros disque quoi and um, with the track free which also a single track released one month ago it's much uh, heavier very catchy the guitar solo is very melodic the sweet passage are very nice I can feel the beautiful touch on it thank you so much yeah I I, I wanted the, the I played a solo on free and I wanted something more how can I say more European sounding something that's a little bit beautiful because uh, free or also story wise is is a happier song because um yeah kk and remsen they think everything gets better they they travel back to europe and of course it doesn't get better because it's a fucking horror story but <laughs> but uh, right when when the story in free is like kind of opening and everything seems to get good and so the mood is different and I just wanted to add something beautiful more a beautiful solo something yeah. more European less thrashy sounding so yeah I'm glad you, you like it yeah the solo is cool yeah very melodic just I can feel it of course yeah Yeah, that's right. And euh, donc alors il explique notamment euh, que sur le solo il y, a, il y a un très beau solo notamment sur ce titre Free, le single qui a été réalisé il y a un mois notamment, qui, euh, qui est très évident, qui est très accrocheur aussi. Et euh, donc il y a pas mal de passages sweep, il y a un très très beau toucher hein, d'ailleurs. Euh, pareil, hein, c'est un titre avec lequel on, on écoutera tout à l'heure, c'est juste cool quoi. Et euh, donc ça le touche aussi parce qu'il a, c'est aussi beaucoup d'émotions qu'il a donné sur euh, en termes de solo et beaucoup de travail notamment. And um, on this uh, on YouTube. 25,000 real views on YouTube and your fans are really happy to listen to uh, this music. It's nice. Oh, on, uh, I mean on uh, free songs on YouTube. Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, super. Yeah, it's super, yes. It's a real views. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, it's, yes. And um, the title, The, the Thin Veil, developed differently. I find, I find it more progressive but it's heavy metal sides on the voice of KK and also it's yeah. uh, it's heavy too on the uh, on the chorus because they are very close on these songs yeah yeah it's very yeah. different uh, it's yeah it's it's very different um, but um, yeah i think he he uses his normal voice more often now so he did the high screams on the first one and also a little bit less on the on the second one but now it's 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 different voices and so when troy sings yeah a lot of people don't realize how how good he really is as a singer mm -hmm. so he can do almost everything that's really it's really amazing and i think there are a lot of parts on this record where where the voice is just fantastic so um He can do everything. It's super thrashy or aggressive, and, and he can do some very melodic things, and of course, all the high screams and everything. So, it's just it's just nice to have very heavy and fast music, but somebody who's able to come up with a great hook line all the time. So that's really something I enjoy as a listener too. Ouais, effectivement, le titre The Finn Veil, vale, c'est un des gros titres de l'album qui est complètement différent, hein, notamment parce qu'il a quand même une touche progressive et le côté heavy est dans la voix de KK, le, le chanteur et caractère comme ça, enfin personnage euh, donc euh, du groupe. Euh, il y a une très belle voix notamment et il est capable de la moduler en différentes choses, c'est-à-dire en, en plus agressive, en mode euh, beaucoup plus clair. Euh, il a, il a différents, il, il a différentes euh, sonorités dans sa voix, etc. C'est juste un très bon chanteur et comme je pense que les gens ne réalisent enfin Marcus pense que les gens n'ont pas encore réalisé à quel point KK est vraiment très bon très très fort quoi comme chanteur quoi et en même temps les chorus et euh, la voix tout ça c'est très c'est très proche quoi et et euh, ouais c'est vraiment cool quoi and um, i would like to take this opportunity to say that the mix of the album is very precious it's good awesome man thank you thank you very much that was the same guy Dave Otero in Denver he mixed all three mm. of the albums mm. 
But the last time we weren't super satisfied with the drum sounds. We wanted to sound a little bit more organic. So this time Angel, our drummer, he also recorded the drums at his studio, at Dave Otero's studio in Denver. Um, so from the beginning on, it was clear he knew exactly how the drums had to sound so that everything fits in the mix. Uh, and it was a good decision to record the drums over there. So um, it was easier for us because we yeah we played to the drums, of course, and we knew exactly the sound would be super amazing. And Dave Otero always does a great job, but I think it's the best sounding of three albums and we're really happy with that. Ouais, effectivement, Dave Otero a fait un gros boulot dans le terme, donc dans tout l'album, notamment et le mix, il est fantastique, quoi. Il est vraiment très précis, je vous dis, et puis notamment là, les prises de batterie, etc. Tout a été calculé, ils ont très, ils ont fait un gros boulot là-dessus. Il est très content, en tout cas, du résultat. Et je vous le dis, hein, le mix, c'est juste quelque chose, quoi. C'est vraiment très, très bon, quoi. And Battle Blood comes at the end of the album, uh, and that's this big title that sum up pretty well of the vibe of the album. Oh yeah. It's big. Yeah, a super heavy track. Yes. Yeah, a super heavy track. Told you. Uh, normally, I don't like those super simple choruses where mm. where the singer always repeats the title, but I just love Battle Blood and how Troy did that. So yeah, it's a super heavy and super fast song, and it's uh, it's really hard to play. I can tell you. Um, I really had to practice this this fucker. <laughs> but I. Mm. Yeah, honestly, I can't wait to play that live. I think okay. it's, it, it's a live smasher, so we, we should really do that. Voilà, effectivement, vous l'avez entendu, hein, il a hâte, il a hâte de jouer euh, cet album en concert, en tout cas, oui, effectivement. Je vous rappelle en direct avec nous, Marcus Ulrich, guitariste du groupe Them, l'album Return to the Hemisphere, il sortira le 30 octobre prochain via Steam Hammer, en tout cas. Donc ça démarre avec Deluvium, notamment l'intro Edge of Ascension, en 3 The Tumultuous Voyage to Hemisphere, en 4 Free, en 5 Field of Immortality, en 6 The Thin Veil, en 7 Wacken en 8 Memento Morio Interlude en 9 Hellhounds The Harbingers of Death en 10 Battle Blood en 11 Maestro's Last Stand et en 12 Finis notamment voici le line-up au chant KK Fossor Marcus Johansson à la guitare Marcus Ulrich en direct ce soir Guitars Angel Cott à la batterie Richie Siebel Keyboards et Alexander Palma à la basse ça c'est The Album en tout cas c'est un super beau truc euh, je vous dis l'album sera disponible en CD Digipack notamment avec une édition limitée en vinyle, deux LP en bleu, enfin noir, etc. Avec des, des imprimés à l'intérieur. C'est juste super beau. Tout ça, ce sera disponible notamment sur la page Facebook du groupe Them. Allez-y, notamment, vous y trouverez le lien du site, etc. pour les précommandes, notamment. Et en même temps, euh, c'est un beau disque. Je vous dis, ce sera un bel achat en tout cas pour cette fin d'année, quoi. And Marcus, I hope you are planning to play the whole album on stage when this COVID-19. Well, the story is over. Uh, yeah, the story is over. Um, I hope we can play live again. So mm -hmm. we we don't know. Nobody knows right now. I don't think we play the whole album, but when we when we go on stage, we usually mix everything together. We played the first album in a row when it came out because we didn't have more songs. Mm -hmm. But right now we have three albums, so I don't think that we play the whole album in a row, but we play. A good probably list. work in blocks so that we play some songs from from every album because okay. people also want the old songs um yeah just, let's just hope uh, it happens again so that we're able to yeah stand on stage again Ok, effectivement, dès que cette histoire de, de Covid-19 sera terminée, le groupe sera donc de retour sur la route notamment et hâte de jouer cet album avec notamment, euh, pas complètement puisqu'il y aura aussi des titres tirés du premier et tirés du deuxième, donc il y aura un bon mix parce que les fans veulent entendre tout ça, donc ça c'est très important. Uh, Marcus, uh, just before the end, do you have a message for the audience tonight, please Of course <laughs> <laughs> album give us a chance i mean you don't have to buy it immediately when it comes out just listen to it on spotify or apple music or wherever you stream it and after you listen to that buy it <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much thank you so much for for listening um to the interview and for the interest in in our band so i really appreciate that we we all appreciate it okay thank you very much for the interview on air tonight marcus thank you very much 
Thanks to you for yeah. having me. Yes, of course. Oh, tout de suite, on continue en musique avec le titre Battle Blood du groupe Them Return to Hammersmoor. C'est sur 213 Rock, c'est sur le Vinyl Times, le Classic Rock Radio. Marcus Ulrich, le guitariste du groupe, était avec nous en direct ce soir sur Vinyl Times, le Classic Rock Radio. sur la Webrack Station Vinny Times le Classic Rock Radio Battle Blood Them notamment Return to the Hammers Moor vous avez entendu Marcus Rui qui était avec nous en direct interview que vous retrouverez en podcast juste après l'émission sur nos pages Facebook notamment continuons toujours avec Them Edge of Ascension le titre on en a parlé durant l'interview 213 Rock
Carrière sur la Web Rock Station, Vinny Times, le Classic Rock Radio, Them, Edge of Ascension, Return to Hammersmoor, notamment, vous avez entendu, hein, Marcus Ulrich, le guitariste, est avec nous en direct, cet album, il est juste cool, hein, du bon heavy, et il sortira le 30 octobre prochain. Allez, elle est là, chaque lundi soir, c'est le Fire, notamment, quand elle est...